Hi guys, welcome back to Seed Story Cup 4. Uh, this is the loser's match of uh, between Ties and Show. With me, Elki and Firebat. We didn't have the third glasses for Firebat, so we're sitting here on the two. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, how okay. are you doing, guys? Uh, doing well, good, man, yeah. It's pretty loud out here, it's right? It's pretty loud. Yeah, there's basically a party going on everywhere. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, there's tons of people, great atmosphere, very happy. That was one thing I was worried about when we kind of had the new venue, right? Yeah. If it will have the same atmosphere as the old place. And I guess it has. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's just more space now, which is great. Because like before it was a little cramped, but now we have space. But the yeah. game's already underway. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's cool. No downtime. Almost. Almost. Oh, yeah. the most exciting game in the game too. Free smash against free smash. Yeah, definitely a fun one. A lot of like tricky things that can happen in this matchup. So really the important thing that players got to be focusing on is the big threat cards. And that comes in with uh, Emperor Thorsen, Archmage Antonitis, and uh, Alex Straza. Being able to get one of those things down first is like huge. That's true. And uh, Emperor is, I think, the biggest biggest card in the deck. Because the, uh, then, I'll be so, and then I build so much combos you can do. Uh, it doesn't really matter when do you draw like the Antonidas, because most of those uh, games are going to fatigue or almost fatigue, right? Oh yeah, so, so you can like you cast three spares with Antonidas and again like get yeah, yeah. three fireballs. If, if you three get fireballs, you really if you get three fireballs, three fireballs is the magic number. If you're able to get three fireballs, then they can't actually like heal out of it with Alex Straza and then heal bot. Mm -hmm. So then you're able to actually not take it to fatigue basically and actually be able to kill them before that point most of the time. What Without I was saying, just draw every burn spell in your deck. Yeah, but what I was just saying that the fact is if you draw and uh, Thorosin is more important than Anton yeah. Idas because you have to draw it first just to get the, that Yeah, to get the, all the combo yes. pieces going. So, it, And then it also makes your draw spells cheaper so you can cycle more efficiently, empty exactly. your hand better. Because the situation that comes up a lot actually is you have so many cards that do nothing like Flame Strike, Frost Nova, Doomsayers in your hand that you can't really cycle efficiently because you got to get them out of your hand first. Yep. So if you have like uh, Thorosin in your starting hand, you will keep it in that oh, matchup? Oh, every time. Definitely. If you have Thorosin... Alex Straza or oh, Antonidas, you keep all of those. The whole mm -hmm. point of the game is getting those first. So Cycle's great for them, but actually having them is better than having actual Cycle cards. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I never played this matchup or this game, so I'm not sure. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a tricky one for sure. It's not like a traditional Hearthstone game. It's like way out there. <laughs> Usually you can say that about every, almost every single control mirror match. Because an example, if you play Warrior versus Warrior, you but, also dig for dif different cards than yeah. Cycles. Yeah, example. like Sylvanas is insane in that matchup and certain yep. things like that. So it's, the control mirror match is definitely really interesting. Yeah, not so a now he never wants to pop up the ice block. Yeah, or the yeah. ice barrier, ice barrier, right? Yeah, because you don't yeah. have any minions to get through chip damage anyway. Uh, so like, you never want to give them the armor because Alex Straza can't take that away. That would just add health to your opponent. Exactly. But it gets weird sometimes. Later on in the game, you have like an Alex Straza on the field, and then you want to attack it and proc it. So then like things get weird with that, and it gets. But so at the same time, Alex Straza is the same, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why then you like attack with Alex Straza. And so you should yeah. attack with it if you. If you have a chance, no? Basically, no, 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 attacking with Alex Rosa is, is three mana worth. Yeah, yeah, because then they can also play, like, they, they can play the other barrier if you practice. Then you now. can finish him up with the loot order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because of threat, nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and now, show will not, not attack with his loot order and probably yep. will ping it. <laughs> the same thing, yeah. Is it a true mirror match, yeah? <laughs> yep. Yeah, so Tice a little bit ahead though. He's already got the Archmage Antonitis, and he has the coin, which is an important card in this matchup. Oh! Because oh. that coin can turn into a fireball. But uh, show not far behind, huh? Let's so see just what this guy to cycle. Parts. Yeah, yeah, just using Thalmus to cycle. Sometimes you can save it for burst, but I think it's more important just to get the Antonitis, get the Alexstrasza. You need those things immediately, so cycling is really smart there. Especially with that. You have uh, the Emperor Force on already in the hand, so you, mm. and you can play basically that now because you have two Frostbolts which will cost one mana, and your opponent has to do something yeah. with the Emperor. So it's just worth to play it next turn. Yeah, it basically makes your opponent's turn to be Fireball the Emperor because you're mm -hmm. not letting that guy live. Yep. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. But then you can't really do anything about getting it first though because they're always going to get Fireball like 90% of the time, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but Once then their turn down. is Fireball. Emperor. So then they're not cycling cards. It slows them down a little bit. You get a further ahead with your tempo. Because there is tempo in this matchup. It's just a different kind of tempo. Yeah, I see what you mean. But then you can't really do anything if the guy has the Emperor first. Like, there's no, like, 
There's no yeah, way you can play around it because well, it's too stronger than you can. You can uh, Doomsayer on a turn you think they're going to play it, and then they can't play it because there's a Doomsayer in play. The and same it, applies to Lexstraza. Yeah, yeah. So, like, Doomsayers, even though it's a throwaway card and you don't want it, occasionally you can uh, like choose when you throw it away appropriately to then block what they want to be doing with their mana. It's like a low tip for minions. Yeah. <laughs> But sometimes you can just play Emperor. But they, still, they, still, they still get the value from it. That yeah. Turn anyway, right? Yeah, he gets value from it by reducing spells. So now he has the uh, Frostbolt, Frostbolt, Ice Lance combo that he can play with Antonidas if he is, draws it. And uh, his opponent's forced to Fireball this turn, which is going to impede his cycling a little bit and impede his mana from discarding useless cards like Frost Nova, like Flame Strike. So it just slows him down all around. Well, the same thing with Alex Raza. Even if you do Sayer, like the most value is just reducing the opponent's life to 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's basically like additional fireball or power blast. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hmm. That applies for like most of the big minions, except for Antonitis. The value from that is the fireballs, unless you're making them on the exact turn, right? So Doomsayer coming down as Alex Raza is a possibility, but Show doesn't have the Alex Raza. He's worried about playing the Acolyte there, Tice was, because uh, he could get overdrawn or something. Well, he has nine cards in hand, so that loot holder, he has to play something else. So one Doom server will come down. Mm -hmm. Just getting rid of something. But then he's still going to have nine cards when this guy pops, right? So he needs to play one more card. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. going to either play like a Frost Nova or a Doom Server or even a Flame Strike. I think getting Flame Strike out is probably the best. It's like the most useless of those cards. Because Frost Nova can sometimes stall an Alex Straza. And it also can be used used for Antonidas, even if you have, yeah. Yeah, even you have no targets at all. Yeah, but uh, it depends how much he values this ping, I guess. What? He's looking for another card this turn. Maybe he can squeak out a Scientist or something, but I don't really understand this play too much. Because you don't need the card right now, because you will play... Yeah. You have to play something for the Scientist. But isn't he nothing from the Scientist if he does it, right? Yeah, yeah. But he probably only has two of the great of each. Yeah, I don't really understand the reason of pinging your own, what he was looking for exactly. Maybe some sort of tech card is in his deck that he was really searching for, but... Kids on Mystic. Kids on Mystic. Kids on Mystic. Kids on Mystic. Yeah. I mean, you but probably... Then you, can you can't have two of the same secrets, though, right? It basically yeah, destroys the Oh, secret. that would be sick if they could stack. <laughs> <laughs> it just, <laughs> it just you, destroys like, the secrets. Back. It destroys it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I never played it when I... Alright, that would be really cool if they stacked them. <laughs> Double Kids on Mystic. Double Ice Block. That would be sick. But then would both ice blocks proc at the same time? Because that would be not so good. Yeah, that would be not so good. Yeah. Particular mirror. But I mean, it's just like good because you get his ice block. Yeah. yeah. Dice has seven cards in, uh, in the hand, so yep. you can think about pinging Acolyte of Pain. Yeah, if you ping Acolyte of Pain, he goes up to eight, and then he draws two more when you Blizzard, so he exactly. can actually fatigue Tice one card. And that card might be... Alexstrasza, Antonitis. Th Thorazin. Thorazin, yeah. I mean, he has yeah, all three. Right? Oh, he has Antonitis, yeah. <laughs> two he could be that are extremely crucial. Yeah, but to cut those two cards might be game-winning. Yeah, it looks like he's going to hold on to the Blizzard here for some reason. And do it this I would way. really love to overdraw my yeah. opponent in, this, in those kind of matchups. Yeah, it's definitely something you really got to be looking out to try and do. But, uh. All right. Now, let's see. No. It gets to a point when the Antonides might be just played from the hand just to get those fireballs already in. So, you basically, yeah. what you do here is. It's not bad. For sure. <laughs> Because your Antonidas would be useless as a, as a minion anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like, no, it's not completely useless because you have to remember your opponent then cannot Alex you because they're forced to kill the Antonidas. And this is the turn they oh, definitely yeah, okay, want to Oh, yeah, okay, that's very important. So if you Antonidas and then, like, coin, Frostbolt, Ice Lance the Doomsayer, then they're forced to use Fireball Ping to kill the Antonidas, and then they're not playing Alex, and then if you draw into Alex, then you can have the first Alex, which is a huge mm -hmm. edge okay, in the okay. matchup. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, so I, I like this line from Tice of just uh, getting the Antonidas out there, impeding his opponent's possibility of Alex, so that he has another opportunity to try and get the first Alex Straza down. And he generates three fireballs, which is a really good number of fireballs, because uh, the damage usually works out that uh, you're going to want three, because they have so much healing in the deck, actually, with uh, 16 points of healing, roughly, or so. They both have a double heal bot. Yeah, well, he has one heal bot, and then he has, like, the Alex Straza, and then you usually get them into a range where they Alex Straza and uh, it heals for like 8-ish, or it sometimes can heal for the full 14 or whatever, but 
Yeah, three fireballs is usually pretty ideal, especially if you're running Pyroblast. If you're not running Pyroblast, you can usually sneak away with two fireballs in this matchup, but three is generally speaking the magic number for the Freeze Mage Mirror for just making sure you have enough damage to actually kill your opponent without having to resort to taking the matchup to fatigue. Because neither deck actually has minion damage, so they have very limited amounts of damage in the deck possibly. Even if they would have, they will be stopped by the Blizzards, Frost Nova, yeah, and yeah. That's so why they both banned the Warrior, because they probably can't. Is that doing dead against uh, Control Warrior, Freeze Mage? Yeah, Freeze Mage is pretty bad against Control Warrior. It's not great against Druid like, either. Why'd you say it was a rate like 10% or 20%? I would say it's 10, uh, about 10. Uh, yeah, Especially after Jostic. So, and uh, Tice actually just fatigues the Cone of Cold there, so he loses that card. Not a very useful one, but. No, well, at least it wasn't, it wasn't Alex Straza. So yeah, that's if, it was, if it was Alex Straza, that would have been bad for him. So you say it's the worst matchup in the game, like freeze measure against... Control against Warrior? Warrior? Yeah, I think it is. Like, otherwise... Of, like, standard decks, yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, you can have some crazy tech things, like <laughs> some weird double Kazan deck would definitely be better against Freeze Mage, but for the most part, yeah, we'll go with that one. Amber going down to make a turn possible with three fireballs. Yeah. So that's 18 damage in one turn. That is a lot of burst potential in one turn. So that mirrors, I always want to use Alex Raza to put the guy at 15. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, now if he puts him at 15, he's leaving Emperor up. So like, Tice every turn is establishing a threat that uh, forces Show to have to remove it so that he Why can't play ride, the Emperor. So. Yeah, if he had Alex, though. Uh, that's like the, the thinking behind Tice right yeah, now. Of course. Is, yeah, because that's the big thing. You can't let them easily play Alex. That's a nine mana drop. They can't remove anything while playing it, so just force them not to be able to play it as long as you can until you can get it down first, because if you get it down first, you usually win. And now he's forced to use the fireball, which leaves his hand very awkward, because he yeah. has no potential pressure, no yeah, minions. And, and he's he running out of damage, too. Yes, exactly. So it, not using that blizzard the turn when he had the chance is kind of biting him back mm -hmm. now, because he would overdraw Ty's one turn earlier. I yeah. might have changed a lot. It might have changed some things for sure, especially since he got overdrawed the other card there. It would have doubled his chances over drawing Alex Strasser yeah. or something. And is that Alex? Nope. Nope. <laughs> One of the worst cards in the deck. Do you have the uh, no, we, we, we can't, can't actually can't? check. Oh. No. I guess it's around eight. Yeah, we just got to kind of look at it and try to feel like the girth of the oh, deck. Oh, oh. Wait, oh, uh, how much was it? I didn't see. I, I will see on the stream in okay. a second. Nine cards, eight cards, how many cards? Nine, Nine. and eight. Oh. Nine and eight, okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, uh, Show will go first to Fatigue. So what would Dice will do here? Uh, he's got to think about Fatigue and he's got to... Because like, if the Arcane Intellects here, he's got problems with hand sizes, he's got problems with potential Fatigue, and he's got to worry about the fact that he's giving his opponent now an opening to play Alex Straza first, and there's a pretty high odds that his opponent has Alex Straza at this point. So that's all running through his head and he's trying to figure out... But then what could he do to not let him play Alex Straza? He can't really do anything. He can't really do anything anymore. He's, used, he's exhausted both Doomsayers. He's or has he exhausted both? He's used one for sure. But like Doomsayer at this point isn't really a good way to stop Alex Straza. He's exhausted both Antonitis and Emperor. So... Oh, he gets the Alex Straza. For next turn. That changes a lot now. Uh, now he has Alex Straza for next turn. He has Doomsayer to kill the 8-8 body if Sho picks up Alex Straza. But even if Sho picks up Alex Straza, he's definitely going to use it here. But he does not... I mean, when does Doomsayer, even if there will be Alex Strasson but we'll put the Doomsayer, yeah. it doesn't really do much. Well, I mean, you, you don't have to worry about freezing it, potentially. Yeah, well, which is pretty but useful. But you have Ice Barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. even if he attacks... So you don't have to freeze it for one turn, but then yeah, the second exactly. turn you're going to have to freeze it, though. So, mm -hmm. like, it can potentially be annoying. But uh, Tice having the first Alex Strasson and the three Fireballs to back it up is really huge. So he has 18 damage. Well, uh, Sho has 8 potential life gain after this 15 health. So Sho has enough health right now to kind of sustain. But now Tice has the ability to start emptying his hand, dumping all those fireballs into his face. So would you even consider playing fireball here on the Doomsayer? It doesn't necessarily say, mm. I want to save my Alex Straza because there will be two possible ice barriers, which basically say that Alex Straza will be useless for two additional turns. You didn't see second Blizzard, you didn't see second uh, Frost Nova. Yeah, no, no, I don't think you saved it. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, that is a line of play for sure, especially since Sho has been exhausting a lot of his burn. Like, maybe you can just exhaust the uh, Doomsayer and then say, all right, I'll be able to beat you burn for burn because you Emperored kind of early and you probably don't have combo pieces for Antonitis to make enough fireballs after wasting so much damage and then take it to fatigue. But at the same time, you have 18 damage in your hand from just fireballs and then you have another seven, so that's 25. 
So you have enough damage to beat a heal bot, right? Or yep. can you not disperse it evenly enough? Because mm -hmm. you got to worry about, like, you have to keep Frostbolt Ice Lance together, so you're missing three from the efficiency there. You still, ha you still have enough with the ping, yeah. So you can pop him with Triple Fireball this turn, and then if he heal bots, kill him. Well, no, he remains at three. So he goes up to 11, and then you have only Frostbolt Ice Lance ping, so you only have eight after that. I, I guess you don't need to break it right now. Sure, I like this. He's going to make sure he uses his burn as efficiently as possible, get his pings in, pop him at a low health total. Mm -hmm. Makes some sense. And he destroys his Acolyte of Pain because it makes sense now to not draw any cards from the Acolyte. Sure. When it comes so close to fatigue. Because now Tice is, um, let's say, ahead of uh, ahead of the uh, yeah. count, uh, draw count, right? Mm -hmm. Because he used the Arcan Intellect when it was 9-8. So now he's... Damn. Yeah, he's I missed it. faster by <laughs> one card. By one card, yes. Yeah. So, Cho's got to be looking at his options to try and figure out how he can stay alive. How he can make Tice lose damage by making the pop as awkward as possible. So he's got to think about how are all the ways that I can get popped by damage. How can I make it as awkward as possible for Tice to pop me so he expends extra damage doing that so my healing is more effective. And 8 health total. It's kind of an awkward number already, so he really doesn't have to do much with that. He's just trying to cycle towards his own Alex Straza to use that as a recovery mechanism later and try and win this game in fatigue. So Thais will, I guess he can use the um, the Fireball and, and Frostbolt here, but then Iceland becomes useless, because that's the second Fireball, uh, Frostbolt, sorry. So you have to, most, in most situations you have to use yeah. both Iceland and Frostbolt, because if he uses Frostbolt and didn't uh, that want to use his uh, Iceland, then he has to keep that for a minion. Yeah, and that is, doesn't make any sense. This is really just quite perfect, to be able to pop your opponent exactly at one, and then you have three Fireballs remaining that can kill your opponent if he chooses to Alex Straza himself back up to 15. It's just yep. enough damage to get the job done. And tonight and is a little too late. Okay. Maybe not. This turn, if you will draw Alex Straza next turn... Well, I mean, like, you got to think about maybe... Can you set up lethal against your opponent, actually? Because you can do 7 damage this turn. No, the fireballs are just too clunky for dispersing damage. But, uh, I mean, you can ice block and do 7 damage and have enough fireballs, but it's just you don't have enough time that way. But even if you set up ice block this turn, your opponent pops it, mm -hmm. and you don't have a second option yeah. to be... Alive on another turn, unless you top deck Alex Straza. Yeah, so he's looking to maybe that was like, the play like, because that was the only winning play, right? Yeah, like three cards left, no? Four cards left, and Alex Straza is one of them. Yeah. So can you win if you make that kind of move? Because I think that's a move that can't really going all in with Antonidas there. Yeah, I mean, no, no. I mean, if you play Antonidas, that's like the winning move if you want to win the game at all, right? Because you assume you get popped regardless. Nah, the problem is you don't have enough time to do the damage, even if you draw the Alex Straza. But he knows there are two more fireballs, at least, in well, the hand. Because like, if you play Antonitis this turn, then you're not playing the heal bot, so then your opponent can pop you by pinging you, and they don't have to exhaust any amount of burn. And then uh, you only have two turns max to live, and it's just not enough time to disperse all the fireballs that you generate off Antonitis anyway. So you die. Well, that's oh, interesting. Tice okay. chooses not to pop him, save onto the fireballs. This is giving Show an opening here. He was afraid of like the uh, Alex Straza recovery because he doesn't have enough burn to finish him after the Alex Straza. But that but this but, gives him an opening. And this gives also Alex Straza a chance to be drawn next and in the 33% chance. Yeah, Alex Straza eventually going to come to the hand. Uh -oh. And so gains the same amount of fireballs as, as Thais. Yeah, I but Thais has cheaper ones, though. It's going to make a big difference. It's going to be hard for a show can only play two a turn. And in Ice this situation, it in doesn't really matter, right? Well, it matters for the Alex Straza heal up. But the problem is, like, Thais doesn't have a way to pop him currently which is a big deal, like unless he wants to use two fireballs, and then if Alex Straza comes to the hand with the 33% chance... And that should have been used then, last turn. Yeah, I think he should have definitely popped him last turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he pops him last turn, and then Alex Straza's back up, and then he's in the quest for more damage. But at least he forces his opponent not to be doing the Antonitis. He just takes away uh, a turn from him. And he has, like, two cards. Right? Yeah. You, can't, you can't leave Antonitis alive. Well, no, no, no. You, you can't afford to kill Antonitis. He doesn't have enough burn in the deck, then, to finish his opponent off. Exactly. Because after the Alex Straza, he'll back up. So I think he should have double fireballed him last turn, popped him, and then if he Alex Straza's him back up, try and find the last remaining bits of damage and not give his opponent this opportunity to even play Antonitis this turn, force him to have to Alex Straza himself back up. But the upside is, Thais has two ice blocks remaining and show only one. So if you use Fireball and ping this turn, 
Your okay. opponent block pops your block okay. next turn. Then you play your ice block and pop his ice block. You pop, he po he's popping yours and you can play two fireballs, but you're missing any kind of... You're missing the three ability. damage, yeah. Hmm. Oh, Pyroblast. Not very good here with the hand of all damage. And no Alex Straza. No Alex So 50% chance of drawing Alex Straza next turn. Okay. But then even if it was next turn, like, Tice is not, it doesn't have more damage in the deck. If he only has two Fireball, how is he going to kill it? Like, Yeah, it's interesting that he chose to deal with the Antonites here because you have to assume at this point your opponent has enough damage, but... He's also going for the plan to Alex him back out. Maybe he doesn't know that. Uh, oh, well, he just—he's just going for the fatigue damage, so oh, he doesn't, doesn't need to burn. Blast. Th Thais doesn't play he the will, fireball blast, right? He will use yeah, one I, fireball. I have no idea. I don't think pain. he does. He usually doesn't. But like, is he's, Thais losing on fatigue at this point, though? Isn't? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, Thais is the one losing on fatigue because he used the arcane intellect earlier. So this sort of plan of going towards fatigue, kind of scary. But uh, he's going to set it. Uh, he has the ability to set his opponent to one, so. If he is actually winning on fatigue, we can't see the card hounds, which is so. No, no, no. Now Tice will draw his last card. This is Tice's last card? Yes. Oh, man. So, so he lost, basically. Yeah. If he would have just went in with the double fireballs, he had the game. The show's yes. last card is Alex Fraza, right? Yes. Yeah, so they can hit himself and there's no way he can. Yeah. That's it. Tice really needed to just go in with the double fireballs and then concede to Alex Straza, basically. Because he doesn't have Pyroblast in the deck, so he doesn't have enough damage to beat Alex Straza. But his mm -hmm. only chance of winning there was to just go in and hope because he's losing on fatigue because he used the Arcane Intellect earlier. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Basically, I think the Arcane Intellect was the mistake in the game, yeah. apart now, from the, from the fact that... All he has to do is pass the turn back and the game's over. Yeah, he doesn't need to do anything. Yeah, he doesn't need to do anything at this point. But Thais is vis uh, visibly upset about this game. Yeah. He yeah. isn't he isn't playing on his level today, I guess. Yeah, Thais self-proclaimed one of the best Freeze Mage players in the world. And uh, he has great results with it in tournament, does well all the time with it. It's a really fun deck to play, and it's really tricky and hard, especially in the mirror. And Tice usually performs exceptionally well and does mind-blowing things with it, but show this gets time, the best of him yeah. today. This time, both players are playing subpar, I would guess, uh, I would say. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Froden taking advantage of that. Hey, Froden has been taking <laughs> advantage of it for sure. Man, that is like one of my all-time favorite matchups in the entire game of Hearthstone. Well, Handlock versus Handlock is also cool. Hey, I have no idea how to play Handlock, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a zoo player. <laughs> okay. I guess it would be, be cool to see a tournament when you play only one class, but you have different decks. An example, like you can bring two decks. Okay. Something like a sideboard, but you're not taking advantage of the heavily... Um, swing cards? Swing cards, like yeah. Game Hunters, like Black Knights and stuff. So you just prepare two, two decks and choose between those ty two types of archetypes. Oh, yeah. Maybe interesting. Hopefully, like this year, they expand more tournament formats. Because last year, all conquest all the time was like so resident sleeper. <laughs> Downing. So I guess the pyroblast is a big difference too in the mirror match. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. Much better to have it. What do you think Tice play instead of the pyroblast? Uh, uh, he's playing cone of cold. Cone of cold. Yeah. Cone of cold. Yeah. There's the so cone of cold is much better against the aggro, but yeah, much and worse weaker. against control. It's a. Uh, it's what he, the tech he used in the uh, World Championship, too, and he got like fourth place with it, farming a lot of Paladins, being yeah. very successful against that. But at the same time, I value, personally, Pyroblast as a good card against aggro as well, because it opens up another win condition for you, which instead of having to have an opening to play Alexstrasza, you can create an opening to play Pyroblast, which is just a one-turn thing. Uh, yeah. So you can freeze the board, play your burn spells to the face, freeze the board, play your burn spells to the face, and just finish with a Pyroblast. So it's not a two-turn setup, it's just a one-turn go. So I think it's actually... It's an interesting tech choice on both ways. So, definitely a, a card people experiment a lot with. Shade. Innovate Shade. I think Conquest is better now that the Patron has been nerfed, actually. Like, the World Championship and uh, the BlizzCon, there was, like, a lot of, like, all the classes were represented, and there was, like, a lot of different... Yeah, apps. it was definitely a lot. It was, like, a lot better. Because I went to the World to BlizzCon in Prague, and it was, like, yeah. and, like, Patron Druid, like, I guess seventy five percent at least of the Yeah, definitely turned out. So that's out. pretty cool because they went like rogue. I was Kaka one with rogue and like there was some shaman and some like I'm like kind of older classes. So Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Patient was definitely way too strong. People were just kinda complaining that they nerfed it maybe too much in a way that kinda like hurt an archetype. Uh, still very really strong. I got I lost three games to us Kaka's patron today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely And I saw like yesterday I was casting uh Zalai against uh Okay. Ash and Zalai won free with the patron as well. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's still, it's still really strong. It's not like it's. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was kind of like a kind of OP before that you can do like 50 damage with mm -hmm. no board. It's kind of yeah too much. Yeah, it's definitely like a completely different deck now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's still really powerful, especially against like. I don't know, I guess like Druid, Paladin, I guess a lot of matchup is really yeah, yeah. very it's, powerful because it's, it's really hard for them to clear to clear a board of Patreon. Yeah, and instead of just being good against everything, it's more oriented to specific matchups now, which is a lot more fair and balanced. <laughs> but uh, anyway, in this game, show with the Freeze Mage again. He's got the Double Scientist start the Dream. Nice though, not a bad hand, and Druid traditionally does pretty well against Freeze Mage. Especially the aggressive version. Oh, uh, I don't actually think so. I think the I have glasses too. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I think the aggressive version is uh, worse than the mid-range version. But uh, why do you think it's easier to clear the minions? Or? Yeah, yeah. It's just because they, they, they all die to Blizzard. Because they most die to Blizzard. Blizzard, Flame Strike, and just like removal spells in general, just do a lot more work. And they run out of steam because they have no card draw to refill their hand. They don't have ancient lords. Point. They don't have Ezra Drakes. Yeah, but, I didn't uh, think about the Ancient of Laws. Yeah, the Ancient of Laws are just so huge in that matchup. Not only as a way to heal, but as a way to just continue fueling the fire that is Druid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at the same time, you have more charged creatures you in the deck. Yeah, more damage sources in general, for sure. But uh, it's just... You have those two guys with charge, no? You have more? You, he has Druid of the Saber now. Yeah, that's charge. like two more. Two more, two right? more, yeah. So, a little more aggressive, for sure. No Doomsayer coming down this turn. He could have went possibly with like Doomsayer Ice Lance this turn, but he's too afraid that it might get cleaned up. Oh, Savage Combatant, TGT is out. Yeah, Savage Combatant is a pretty good card sometimes against Freeze Mage because if you can stabilize it on the board and then they freeze it, it still has an effect. It still buffs your hero power, still allows you to do a lot of extra damage to your opponent. One of the crucial draws will be the first Nova here. And that's something the show really needs. Yeah, Frost Nova Doomsayer being a really crucial combo against any deck to just really slow him down a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about Fell Reaver in this matchup, though? <laughs> <laughs> Seems wanky. Yeah. I mean, you can't really afford losing any kind of damage because your opponent can just uh, freeze your. Uh, f freeze your uh, Valor River and mill your whole deck. Yeah. <laughs> and when you don't Especially have damage... Because I have a lot of, like, like low-cost cards, right? Yeah. A lot of low-cost cards and a lot of freezy cards. It can the, get awkward really quick. The low-cost is not even a problem. The problem is that the, the Valor River will not even attack once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then your deck's gone. Yeah. So basically, it's a de dead card. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you do here, you think? Um... Doomsayer and Frost Nova, will it allow you to... No, no you don't have uh, enough mana. Uh, sorry, uh, Icelands. Okay. Because you can play Doomsayer, Icelands the 5-5. Five five. Mm -hmm. Your opponent will have a 4-4 four four then. And that allows him to trade with a Wrath, so that's not yeah. ideal. The aggressive Druid actually doesn't run Wraths. The Wraths are swipe. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. They cut Wraths for Druid of the Saber, so they don't have any Wraths in the deck, but... Where? But you can still use um, the Root of the Saber and Cure Power. Saber and, yeah, Living swipe. Roots and kills it, Swipe kills it, Keeper of the Grove kills it, so it's, he finds it's too risk to try and do mm. it at that point. First Nova. Uh, Perfect in five. Yeah, there you go. The comeback begins for the Freeze Mage, but is it is it early enough? He's at seven. <laughs> no, but kind of like 15, right? Because uh, he's going to get the Ice sure, Barrier. Sure, yeah, 15. Unless, 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 he he double swipe, unless he has double swipe. swipe. Swipe living roots into another living roots. The Keeper of the Grove does direct damage as well. He's got outs. So you might think of keeping the swipe to sin? Yeah. He's one mana off from being able to actually clear that doom yeah, there. He has to keep the yeah. swipe, no? What, what does he want to do with the swipe? I mean, do you want to go face, you think? Well, I don't know. if the secret is currently an ice block and not an ice barrier, he can set up for swipe living roots to, to break it. Yeah, but he knows it's a nice block, right? Because he, he knows it's good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he attacked already, so he knows it's yeah, blocked. Yeah, with those guys, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I like Savage Combatant Hero Power. Just throw away the Savage Combatant, basically, to set your opponent down to four, so you can pop him with Swipe. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. why I'm saying that you should uh, save the Swipe this turn. Yeah. Well, he's gonna set him to two, so Living Roots. I mean, pop you can do it next turn anyways, right? You can no, do okay. I mean, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but you can't. The barrier. But you can't oh, use yeah, yeah, Combatant next turn. That's the problem. Yeah. You basically say I can't use Combatant anymore in this game. Well, I mean, he, he needs to find a keeper of the Grove. Have, is he going to have damage to uh, pop him off? Yeah, he can pop him once, but now he needs to figure out a way to pop him again after that. Yeah. So he needs a keeper. Yeah. He needs a second living roots. 
He needs oh, basically swipe. 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 So, yeah. swipe. Like, so using combatant like four was really crucial. Uh, well, this way he gets to pop him at two instead of popping him at four, which mm. is upsides for sure. No, because if you use it before, before the scientist dies and he could pop him, now he can't, and he could kill him actually. Well, you can you can right. still pop him with the living roots. He would still have the be able to gain eight. Just the only difference is he would have popped him at four if he did savage combat and hero power. Oh, no, but he wouldn't because like the the sequence was not up because the scientist was still alive and he died to the doomsayer, right? So he actually would have won, no? No, 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 no. Wait, so he, if he pops him last turn, he, he can't pop him pop last turn. He can't. He, he doesn't have enough mana. Yeah, he was at six mana. He so only he, has the ability to do six damage, not seven. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he, he could like attack with a savage combat and then swipe this turn, and then next turn he can kill him. Pop this, pop this turn with a swipe, right? No, no, no. He did. He, the combatant was not on board. Even like if you play the combatant, you only deal three damage. Yeah, you three damage with the hero power, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah three damage. Yeah, yeah. and then this turn he could have popped him with swipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but that's the, the same, the same, the same, same outcome. Thing, still, because uh, the, uh, the only is thing is different is that the fact that the combatant will have been used instead of the swipe. Yeah. So he still would need to find. Then he would need to find another swipe because he would have popped him at four health. So then only swipe pops him. This way he pops him at two health. So then the cards that pop him are Double Keeper of the Grove and the second Living Roots. So there's three cards this way instead of one card the other way. So this way is a little bit better. <laughs> so now, this is kind of awkward for Thais because he basically is um, sitting there with those cards saying, well, I guess I have no, ha no, no hand. Because even if you play the Savage Combatant, you can benefit from the, hero uh, from the hero power anyway. So it's basically just a blank card for now. Unless you can deal more damage than the Ice Barrier gives um, show. The half, of course. So, if you deal more than 8 damage, you can or at least 8 damage with the attacks. I mean, I think he has to pop the Ice Barrier anyways, because he has like a lot of cards. We're like, we yeah. on like <laughs> four cards. We're like laying on like waiting for like those four cards to win. By the time show is going to get a, a Hillbot or something, yeah. then it's not going to work anymore. I think yeah. it's more reliable, even though it might get freeze a lot. Like, if he plays a Savage Commander now, it's already 7 damage. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the Ice Barrier is 8, so it's kind of working. Oh, there it is. That's 10. That's yeah, enough. That's it. GG. Well, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> wow, aggressive Druid really bringing down the beat down. Yeah, the Freeze Mage didn't even have a chance that game. Well, to be fair, show, show start was kind of rough. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a little bit rough there, and uh, but he did have the he did have the Doomsayer for Snowbat on five though. It's yeah, it's not that, he had that rough, right? I don't know. Yep. The problem is he was already at seven health by the time he had that. <laughs> yeah. Seven yeah. health at ten five. I guess aggressive druid is really aggressive. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's got a good. It's got a name for a reason, huh? Yeah. Exactly. I died at six, ten six if I remember correctly against um, what was I playing? Oskaka. Oskaka, yeah. world champion. Yeah, he wrecked me with the druid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will happen, man. Yeah, druid is very powerful if you get the if you get the right start. It's just like mm -hmm. it's so strong. So this is a mid range or no? It's secret. Uh, it's secret Paladin. He's okay. got the redemption in hand. So I guess that um, from my testing, it seems like the aggressive druid is favorite in this matter. Yeah. yeah so this, why I, why I, would I show think? pick it? Because uh, his other deck, he feels is less favored. The what, is deck is the, deck? Uh, what is the other deck? Warrior, right? And it's uh, Druid. Oh, it's Druid. Yeah, uh, Warrior. Oh, he's got the Warrior, right? Yeah, it's Druid. It's Druid, yeah. Mid range so, like, Druid is also not very good against aggressive Druid. But it might be better than the Secret Keeper, uh, than the uh, Secret Paladin, right? Uh, I mean, maybe not with this start. Yeah, I no, think no, Secret Paladin is a good Secret start. Is not that bad, I think. It's okay, I mean. Yeah. It's probably like 60 uh, 40 in favor of the aggressive Druid, and mid range Druid is probably similar. So I guess he just feels more comfortable with this matchup, though. Wow, but this start, this is really something aggressive yeah. from the Paladin. Two Secret Keepers. I mean, you have Perfect in 1, Perfect in 2, perfect in and three. Perfect in 3. Because you always have something that uh, is basically against your opponent's board. Haunted yeah. Keeper counters the Living Roots, and Secret Keepers are just insanely valuable against Druids in any way because he, he does th those minions basically have a the red dot on the forehead. Because <laughs> if they go out of control, Druids possibil uh, the possibilities of Druid dealing with that creature is only dealing damage. And so you can't rely on any kind of removal. But is it strong enough to beat a turn 3 Fell Reaver? Hmm. <laughs> Think about it. If 
No, I should, uh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I'm just maybe not, but we're gonna about to find out probably. I don't see thing. any other play here besides getting that fell reaver out there as soon as possible, trying let's, to deal damage with it. Let's see if Thomas is. Kogamer would be sick against. Oh the yeah, Kogamer would be insane. Yeah. Kogamer and another side next turn is just oh like. Oh my god! And then the fell reaver just never is able to attack. Well, he needs like two two attacks basically to win the game. Yeah. Sixteen points of damage is insane. We know that you can go through just one um, noble sacrifice with your hero power. So that's that's it, and it's really far away from the such pressure being played. Trade. What do you guys think about that trade? I'm not sure. Why would you trade here? Because if you deal one damage, is he protecting his? Um, no, I think you can. Because right? she always gonna trade it 100 percent. Yeah, probably. He doesn't with want two to secrets. trigger the number sack, he wants to force him to trigger I mean, the number sack with a uh, hero power at least. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting trade. I guess you play around them playing double secrets and being able to just trade down your Fell Reaver potentially, but. Savage Roar and down the Fell Reaver, okay. Okay. Aspirant, not important. Loaded, not important. Swipe, oh, pretty that's, important. that's pretty important. Yeah. But he has one, already one in head. Mm -hmm. This might mean also that Show will go more. Reckless into the game yeah. and overextend, and because he just saw one swipe sure. being burned, so he might not anticipate the second swipe be, uh, to be already in hand. Yeah, but this fire on his board is kind of useless anyway. Yeah, yeah but like okay. it's, it's probably gonna play Shredder and Belcher. Yeah, so it's <laughs> not like it's not like he has a most of. I think like it's not like he has a most of a battle that he's deciding to play. Yeah, definitely not. Must think, have, but, but yeah, I can't see him playing any other cards than the best four drop in the game into the best five drop in the game. The only card he would be, if he gets a cog hammer, he has to play it, I guess. But that's it. That's like the only other cards that he sure, would play. Sure, sure. Makes a lot of sense. Oh! oh! He's not even testing for Noble Sack, so I guess what? he is using the swipe this turn. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see Has to mean that. Or maybe he wants to develop the combat. No, it is the swipe coming down. Clearing off one of the Secret Keepers, just calming the board down. Looks like he's kind of trying to take a value game, which makes some sense with the five drop in his hand, lead into a more value-oriented play. Yeah, I think what I've got face here. I don't know if that was right or not, but you would have hero powered down the noble sack and just yeah, probably. Face. Huh. I don't know if it's correct. But you don't know if it's noble sack or not, too. It might be three other secrets. Yeah, there's like three to four other secrets it could be. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So like, but like the only one that can uh, stop you from attacking, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's one that can stop you from attacking, and you can check it by using the hero power. But then you forgo the ability to play swipe. And if you win that risk, that's 25 percent against you. Then you're able to attack face and play the swipe. So risk reward. Charge? Nope. No, just protecting that fell reaver seems really strong. That 8-8 is going to be able to get in a lot more work, I think. And those are dead cards, basically. The keeper was a clutch draw. <laughs> yeah, being able to stop this sludge belcher. Don't? Nope. Oh man. I definitely want to keep the secret keeper alive here as it's the one that can grow, not the mini bot. Next one basically you can trade with the fell reaver, so that changes a lot. He's gonna silence it, right? Probably. Yeah, I mean the keeper will silence the belcher, but next turn double secrets will allow the secret keeper to grow to four. So you can do you can trade with two minions basically for for uh, for the Fell Reaver. Oh, yeah, well, the Fell Reaver already hit you for 16. Might not uh, be fast enough. <laughs> but you have to do it. You have to do it for sure. You can't just let him stick forever. Oh, is that silencing? Oh. Yeah, I like this. Now he can clear the entire board and set up for the Fell Reaver to do more damage over the following turns. Okay, he heads this up. makes sense. Yeah. And he still has an answer for Tyrion in the form of the Keeper of the Grove. Potentially that comes out later, but I don't know if the game's even going that long. <laughs> Do you think now Tice will t will play um, Hero Power to test for the second Noble Sacrifice? He does it. It just kind of like naturally fits his curve, I guess, because he can still play a minion with it. No, but, it's uh, probably gonna. I think at this point it's probably worth it to check. <laughs> yeah, because you almost have no deck left. Yeah, because he wants to keep other juggler probably. Yeah. Anyways, so Keeper yeah, the okay. juggler and then hero power makes a lot of sense. You gotta be Does it? Because Avenge. It's number second Avenge. Avenge no. Yeah. I guess it's number. I mean, it these are the cards anyway. he has left to win the game with. 
Only three. He has no more cards in his deck, so he's got to figure out a way. How can he do 19 damage knowing that he has no more ammo left? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. This might really change a lot. So do you... F I feel feel like you have to use Keeper first. Uh, you should attack... I mean, if you attack first, because you want to get this one to get redempted, just in case. Okay, and then you can silence down the, uh, the redemption. But well, then what? It just makes him come back out of the 1-1, one, one, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So you should so heal power and, and shake that one, and then... But yeah. And then if it's an Avenge, you can silence it. If it's Avenge, so then sucks. you can silence the Juggler, worst case. And then you're pretty screwed from that case, though, because that's going to be able to deal with your Fel Reaver. Yeah, it's like, but it's like the worst combination. But uh -huh. I guess it's not as likely, because you already played one number sack. Sure. Makes a lot of sense. But... I, yeah, I think you got to go for it. Like, you have three cards left. You got to go whatever line gives you the chance to win the game. And you can't really think about worst possible case. You just got to be like, what is oh, the sick. best case? Sick. He's not even checking the... Okay. Well, now there are less chances of if he keepers first second you... double sacrifice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but if he if there is, he misses like eight damage and probably dies next turn, which should have been a lot. Yeah, eight damage is important. So, but now he sees that there is. Uh... He might even just die to the to the juggle sac sac summoning the guy and hitting with a knife. That would be so sick. Yeah. <laughs> if it's another sack and he hit face and he comes out and like yeah, that would have been swing a knife. That would be like he kills the juggler. In his redemption, I, he might survive actually, because now he he's getting survive. a completely spirit and yeah, the law of draws are really good for him, like consecration or like not, not mini bot not. though. The juggle he's hoping it hits the fell reaver. Oh my god! Now he's hoping it hits the shade or the fell reaver. So if that hits the shade, <laughs> that was close. So Never lucky. No lucky. So inches away. He's facing down 8 damage next turn from Savage Combatant Hero Power plus the board. Tice is getting 2 damage this turn, so he'll be at 13. Okay. If He's taking 3 next turn, so like effective 10 really. Plus mm -hmm. the Hero Power, so 11. So the Paladin player has to put together 11 damage somehow. And that's not possible with one card. I some towns, right? I think he plays August. Oh, actually, I think he removed it. Uh, and uh, Tyrion. Actually, oh, yeah. he removed the August because I was playing this deck list and he said he removed the August for an hour. Okay. So I guess uh, then Tyrion... Because the there's like so many freeze mages, I guess. Second Belcher? Maybe second Belcher, maybe Tyrion. Um, True Silver Heal isn't really Cog Hammer, Cog Hammer will do it. Probably. A Cog Hammer is a good Tonto. He's got two Cog Hammers remaining. Mm -hmm. Tice looking to try and trade to reduce his risk a little bit, maybe? Doesn't make any sense. I don't like the trade either. I think you really want to prioritize face damage. But I guess you may because be worried about Quartermaster or something. But uh, yeah, this trade seems a little sloppy. Because if your opponent will talk the Consecration next turn, you have no way of winning. Yeah, like if you lose your minions, you're dead. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess maybe he's trying to hope that he can preserve some damage on board. But uh, I guess what he needs is this guy to survive next Well, time. he will, yeah, he will if, have if that guy evil. survives, he wins, yeah. Uh, okay, that's he, he, wins. he wins. He wins. Wow, that was really close. Close. <laughs> Wow. Well, Wow, that, that game was down to the wire. That was really close, yeah. Fell out of your burn 20 cards. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that for sure. But uh, still was able to get enough damage in to really close out the game. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs cards when your opponent is dead, huh? You need a red button uh, for the pilot shutter to just pop it instantly when you play it. <laughs> so you can just dig for a taunt or a doomsayer or whatever. Suicide Shredder option. Yeah. yeah, that's what we need. We need a buff Shredder. Make it stronger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's an easy way to uh, nerf Falter Shredder. You just have to print really bad two drops. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They're doing it. Like, we you know when you get a Wrath Guard, sometimes it's kind of hurt. It's kind of rude. Well, yeah. well Darnassus is, really is, uh, uh, is pretty Darnassus brutal, is pretty brutal, yeah. Darnassus they added really the brutal. new uh, Novice Engineer, this Carab, right? Yeah. That's pretty bad. That's oh, yeah. pretty bad. And then they have the the one two priest one. Oh that's yeah, pretty that's bad. pretty terrible too. Yeah. yeah, a lot more one twos coming into the game. Which one is a one two priest one? Oh, uh, it? This uh, curator, the yeah. museum curator. Museum curator. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 It gives you a death rattle minion when you. Yeah, but if you get it off shredder, you don't get the death rattle minion. Yeah. You just get a but one get, two. Like yeah, you don't get the battle cry, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's just a really bad minion. So any minion with battle cry is pretty mm -hmm. bad. If they yeah. add more minions like that, shredder might be. 
pretty bad. No, but Maybe. I think there's still gonna be more. <laughs> there's still gonna be more minions overall. Yeah, that is just too good. It's almost too good now because like you kind of have to play it, and then like all the other drops, it looks like. Oh wow! Uh, okay, so because the ancient, ancient shade, it's like seven four, and it draws a mind to your deck, and it's like seven four four four. But everybody's gonna like, play Shredder and tra trade into it. And yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh. And then they gotta get a minion on board, and you got you get a mine. It's like oh. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's bad. bad. <laughs> it's bad, man. <laughs> Feels bad, man. All right, the Druid mirror match. It's probably the most skilled matchup in Hearthstone, right, guys? Definitely. Sure. <laughs> But Living Woods is pretty sick in that spot because you can uh, pop the Adonis's like... Yeah, you can use Knife Juggler and then make the 1-1s. I, one one. yeah. I was just saying, uh, thinking better. about that, if you can go like risky like that, because you know there will be no swipe next turn. Yeah, because they only have 3 mana. Unless well, they if you hit, right? Yeah. If you hit twice, yeah. if you hit that 1 you have out of 2, 66%. right? You 66%. Something like that, yeah. yeah. To kill so, it. so you hit it, you trade the 2-3 into the 2-3, so that then it's a 2-1, and then you Knife Juggler. Summon the one ones with living roots. You got two juggles to try and finish the job. And if you miss, it's catastrophic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could like you could go down assets and uh, living roots and trade. It's not like optimal though. Or living roots your power. Uh, it's not optimal though, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you miss potentially can miss one damage this way, I guess. But then I guess if he they both go face, yeah, he goes and face. Now, now it's like sick. <laughs> yeah. Now this white uh, is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, you could have. Do you think you would have done uh, down assets and living woods and trade, or just living woods, hero power and trade? I like this line because you need to be developing your board. You can't yeah. just react to their nasses. So like the risk is worth it. And most of the time, you pull out ahead in such an advantage that you just snowball the win. But uh, not this time. Not this time. Not this time. <laughs> not this time though. <laughs> not this time. That was like so crucial because like just one turn, not be able to play swipe. Now it's like, yeah. Now it's bad. Now it's bad because he's gonna keep her the. Lepernome, yeah, and uh, show is off to a pretty good advantage here. But he still needs to pick up a five drop because his curve is yeah, pretty high pretty right slow, now. Still pretty slow hand work. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tice has the four into the five, so just like a really solid curve. And the Shredder contests the Keeper of the Grove very nicely. I guess that works. Yeah, something to do, huh? Oh. Yeah, I like this. Huh? Being able to kill the Shredder. Mana efficiency. You're against Aggro Druid. I mean, you got to make sure you're killing everything. <laughs> and uh, uh, it looks like he's playing the mid-range variant uh, show, so... Now, even mana, Midhouse Mana stuff would not help. Oh, oh wow. Actually, actually, that's a good one. Man, it lives through the Keeper of the Grove attack. That's very fortunate for Tice. But at the same time, still, it's only a 1-2. Okay. He's going to opt to play two minions, it looks like, over the low tab, or still debating it. What do you think's better? Excuse me? What do you think's better, playing the two minions or playing the low tab? Two minions, always. Two always. Minions, always. Always better. Probably two minions because you already use one swipe too. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's better always to play two minions against uh, Druid because he has problems to deal with multiple minions at the same time. Because okay. the only answer to multiple minions is swipe. And mind control tech. And mind you play one swipe. Tech. Yeah, mind control tech. <laughs> He already played Wise 5 too, so... Yeah, I like it too because he's got the Savage Combatant to fall back on to help him use one of the smaller minions to trade up with the zero power. Knife is okay, huh? Alright. I think you can attack with the Shade right now. You yeah. need to be fast. He is definitely pushing a lot of damage this way, so he's ignoring the uh, the Emperor though. Which so is why do you think Lothab more than the Druid of the Claw? Well, Lothab hits for five and stops spells so your opponent can't really interact with your board. And this way you can save the Druid of the Claw for charging four to the face later. So this way it just makes your board harder to get removed so they can't use things like Swipe and Wrath. Mm -hmm. but, I like, like this. Because yeah. most likely the Emperor will trade with the Lothab. Because you can't really... Oh, maybe you can trade with the Shade. Basically it says, yeah. I will get one less damage. He's sort of like bluffing like a, a Savage Roar kind of play here. And trying to make it so his opponent's forced to trade off the... Uh, Emperor into the Lotheb, but uh, Sho has his own Lotheb to prevent the Savage Roar sort of play to push the damage. So he's going to be able to keep that Emperor alive and get another Emperor proc. The Emperor, the, the fact that he's getting the discount is not important at all right now because what ties, what is important for Thais is just the damage. He doesn't need to clear the minions that don't have taunt. Yeah, he just needs to kill him in time. Yep. And uh, he's looking like he's getting pretty close to it. 
but uh, he's, he's looking scared because he seems tradey there. Wouldn't he just go face for free damage? I think to stay consistent, yeah. Like, he did it last time, so why not again, right? And you have your Druid of the Claw in hand, so that's five well, damage. Well, now he has he, combo good thing he trade. traded, because he would have died, right? No, he wouldn't have died. He would have died. Uh, he has 21, and then there would be yeah, 10, 22 12, more. 26. 26, right? He would have died. Well, he took the face damage by oh, yeah, taking yeah, yeah, it, right. So, so he, he was at 30, so 26 he would he live by four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was safe around even combo there. So yeah, curious about that line. Well, there was a possibility of having two Savage Rolls and that's Force true. of Nature, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's the only possibility, right? But that still unless, tells you if unless, you leave the Lothab up. Uh, unless there's just also there was a possibility of Force of Nature, Savage Roar, Swipe. Or Force of Nature, and that was living exactly, roots or something, yeah. That was exactly 30. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, his board's really strong, so he still can definitely get the win. Even without that three damage, maybe. Yeah, Show being forced to play extremely defensively here. Developing his board not at all, and uh, taking damage on his minion. But at the same time, Tice only has two cards to try and uh, close this game yeah. out. Pretty good. They're pretty good cards, though. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good cards. So he's likely going to charge a Druid of the Claw to the face and hero power this turn. Sho has the Ancient Lord to try and heal out, but is it enough? Mm -hmm. It would be enough if he doesn't get another card. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if his other card is not as good. Let's yeah. see. Wait. Uh, innervates. Well, he can't innervate into Wildgrove to draw a card. Yeah. And, uh, you should him. Uh, I like holding it back, because there's, there's another uh, Fellraiser in the deck. Fairy there's River, a Doctor yes. Boom. There's some yeah, two favorite River, one Doctor Boom, right? Yeah. So three possibilities for that big game hunter to be uh, game breaking. And that's um, five seven damage. Yeah, not enough yet. He's gonna want to be squeezing in those hero powers every turn, right? Uh, I right. think Keeper is better this turn because you, you put another push body. An extra damage because the body. You can't trade them both, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, well, you have z zero mana cycle. That's always good. Always. But he needs. Ancient of War, maybe he plays one. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh that's Ancient, Ancient of War. Yeah, that's also Not good. too bad. He can, he's looking at Drake, Innervate, Ancient of War. And then he can Innervate a Hero Power. Get an extra life, too, while he's at it. Yeah, well, I would be safe, because his opponent has no cards anyway, so... Yeah. Like... And it's not like he can find anywhere else to use the Innervate, really. He still died to the Force of Nature, I guess. Swipe. Force of Nature kills him, yeah. That's it, right? That's Swipe it. helps. That's the only card that kills him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Force Nature is the only card that kills him. Swipe would be really strong at kind of like helping clear, but... Savatrol does four damage, so that's, that's seven. You'll be left at two. You have one dru uh, two Druids of the Saber in the deck, mm -hmm. and one Savage. Uh, no, two Force of Nature still, right? Yeah, two Force of Nature if he runs it. Sometimes they only run one. So if you want to get value from the Savage, I guess you have to use it right now. Yeah. Otherwise, it just doesn't make any sense because your opponent can't heal outside of 14 anyway. Mm -hmm. So Force of Nature is um, enough itself. Yeah. So just getting that extra two damage to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I should use it now because then you can win with swipe. Because if you just wait, then you wouldn't win with swipe. Yeah. If you don't use the Force of Nature. But that's the last turn for Tice to draw damage. Right. So he living two roots. Damage. He's got two. He's got one living roots, two Druid of the Sabers. He's got swipe, one swipe, two, two Force, Force of, of Nature's, natures. and one Roar, and maybe a second Savage Combatant. Wait, there's about ten cards to kill him. I guess <laughs> there's only one Savage Combatant in the All right, deck. Only one Savage Combatant? I think so. So, oh, well, let's see, let's see. It's going to be close. And... Okay, well. What is it? Oh, oh never lucky. So sick. Never lucky baby rage. <laughs> never lucky. <laughs> never lucky. So sick. <laughs> so That's sick. why you should play two Savage Combatants, see? Never lucky baby rage. Yeah. that. That's why you should play two Savage Combatants yeah. with Tice. That could have been a Savage Combatant <laughs> instead could of a Shredder. Savage combatant. <laughs> Oh, that was close. Yeah. It's not been so sick to win with Savage Combatant here, too. Yeah. Uh, so, such a close game. He would have won if he would stick to his guns and just go face every single time. Yeah, right? actually, he there was that, that point where he traded the three right? damage. Yeah. yeah. There was a needless trade, and that ended up actually costing him the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, into that Emperor. Because he wouldn't have died, and then he would have had lethal. The, well, there was the only one possibility with, sec with two Savage Rolls, but that would require to... 
have those uh, two savage draws and force of nature at the same time uh, at the same time when he was playing the emperor and he did draw two cards mm -hmm. so there was a really small chance of that happening right yeah i think very unlikely but he tried to play the safe route and ended up getting burned at the end of it burned but no fall river <laughs> yeah uh. Oh man, Druid versus Paladin though, what do you guys think is favored in this matchup? I think Paladin is a bit stronger, but okay. I'm not so sure. The mid-range version or the secrets version? Because we don't actually know, do we? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean the secret mid-range version, it's, the, it's one, the one the show was playing, yeah. the, show, okay. the show was playing, I think is favored against Druid because you're just like... Yeah, it's just too much pressure. There are a lot of threats, and there are yeah. a lot of threats and the secret are pretty powerful mm -hmm. against the... Uh, Unless the Beacon Hunter will really help with the Mysterious Challenger on turn 6. Because that's like one of the comebacks that can Druid make against sure. the Mysterious Challenger. Otherwise, you yeah, can't really get... That's like, that's like, it's like, if you like the Paladin as a board, it's kind of harder. But like, if he plays like Mysterious Challenger like on the naked turn 6, then it's kind of easier. But usually yeah. the Paladin are like... If you have like Mini Boat and Buster and like... Yeah. And uh, Shredder and like Belcher is really hard to it's really got hard to clear everything by the time yeah. there's a mysterious challenger is that a strong curve oh my it looks gosh. like he has a pretty strong curve yeah. already <laughs> oh, wow. so oh, it looks wow. like it's going to be super oh. hard to remove everything like that is the dream what the show needs is missing, five, He's missing the Belcher but still like oh. or like <laughs> no time maybe no it's like second like, oh, should have. Nice. that's also fine right it's good enough it's if Belcher like, yeah. would have cost five that five mana it's still okay it's like one yeah, I would play it actually if it cost five still like, because five cards, five mana cards are not that powerful. Yeah. It's like, right? Shredder would be a good one. Lotep is very powerful, but. Yeah. Then Belcher is good, but it's a bit more situational. I mean, it's yeah. always kind of good, but. Oh, never, there's the swipe! It's like always good, but it's never, like, great. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. Unless against Face Hunter, it's great, but. Oh, yeah, uh, against Face Hunter. <laughs> no, like, Shredder push. is always good. Like, there's yeah. like no, almost not a spot where Shredder is bad. Yeah, exactly. So I would attack with the hero power to the mini bot here. You have to telegraph that swipe. You think? Yes, I think so. And just set up to swipe. Eh, I like it, yeah. And then you I mean, your the opponent shade. has to do something on the turn. If he just hero powers and do, do, and doesn't do anything anything well, more... He can hero power okay for and you. play the uh, Haunted Creeper if he wants. Yeah, I guess that's fine, but... Yeah. I think it is likely that he just commits the Shredder here. And well, he has two, so yeah, he yeah. could do that. <laughs> But uh, I think it's also very possible you could just play uh, Honey Creeper Hero Power. But, but if you put the Honey Creeper, it can. Uh, you can still trade it and then swipe and clear everything. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, he can still swipe the Shredder now, though, is the thing. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh! The Shredder gets pretty much. But sometimes, I guess, you get a 4 power minion and then it's very good. I mean, I was Mana Storm. Oh, no. you're lucky. <laughs> That's not it. Yeah. That but you can nice. use Hero Power to kill it. Yeah, you can keep the shade stealth if you want, or just push face damage. I like pushing the damage. You're only afraid of like true silver champion, but even then your opponent's spending their entire turn to remove it, and you just follow up with Lothab, which doesn't die to the true silver. Yeah, you can't play, of course, the Azure Drake, but as you said, Lothab is a perfect draw here. Highlighted okay. Shredder's coming down. He's got Doctor Six into Doctor Seven though, so Tice still is in this game by a lot. If he draws Turian, I don't know if he even plays Turian, but if he draws that. And also, he's, he's got the Paladin Curve of Dreams. Yeah. I really like how this show is playing here. Yeah. Just Very aggressive, that's, wh that's what you need to do. Repentance. Uh, drawing one of the secrets is never good, right before you're about to play Mysterious Challenge. Especially when there's like a D, uh, one off. Yeah. So you, you don't really get the value out of the Mysterious Challenge in this situation. Because if that would be, in a, let's say, Noble Sacrifice, that would be actually okay for times. Yeah, because he gets the other one then. Yes. Yeah, maybe he plays two of, two of each. Yeah, still pretty good value though, four secrets. Ooh, four secrets. Yeah, four secrets. Four secrets, four secrets, secrets not bad. I, I take the value from the. That's okay. Double yeah. Savatore, does it help? Uh, you can use this turn here, but do you die next turn if you, if you ignore the minions? Because you have to go through with hero power, so you add three attack, five attack to the board. So that's five, 11, 13, 14 damage. So if there's a true silver champion, that's still not enough because it's at plus well, three because you, you have uh, a weapon. Did you account for competitive spirit? Oh no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, didn't you probably die, right? If you so yeah. pop the secrets, if you pop the secrets, it's an avenge, and then if it's like so, he can't the number, really, the he number can of stacks that right get now. redemption, and it's an yeah. avenge, and all get competitive spirit. Well, I think you're like that's like a. 
Oh, no. You can try and like, like 16, it. 17. Uh, actually, you don't die. You, you don't die to. Well, he takes also two you damage. Die to any weapon. You die to any weapon or consecration. Or yeah, yeah. So you could even like, you could try and like hero power and then go face to try and set up lethal for next turn and then play uh, Lothep. Try and maybe steal the game that way. He's gonna take the safer line and not proc the secrets this turn, reducing the amount of damage. Maybe try and set up for the double roar lethal next turn. Well, if he gets force of nature, he wins, right? Yeah, force of nature is gonna be a lot of damage. Oh, look at that, that Yeah, but I mean, it's not, it's not gonna. He's gonna definitely. He's trade. not gonna keep all his minion though. Yeah. Very unlikely. So. Uh, no, he can't do the combo. I mean, I mean, if the shade stays up, then the combo is gonna be enough damage. But he, oh, can't yeah. have to, he can't even do it. He doesn't have enough mana. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's it, basically. Turn oh. six into turn seven with the most powerful minion in the game. Need a mind, yeah. mind control tech. Mind control tech. He needs mind the tech. tech. <laughs> Does he? He needs to mind control tech BGH it. That's what it, that's what Elki would have done. <laughs> mind control tech, uh, mind control tech, and swipe Doctor Boom and swipe everything. And yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a great draw. <laughs> well, that's the play here. That's pretty tough spot now. Yeah, but I think he's just so strong when you have this curve. It's just like because uh, like yeah. sure, a really good start too. He had the swipe. Yeah. He had the swipe, and he cleared. He swiped the shredder and cleared everything. Yeah, that was, and he had like a bad drop from the shredder, and he was able to clear that. And even despite of that swipe, like having the perfect swipe, he got like sick value. He killed like. He could like free one one. He could the mini bot and yeah. the shredder, and even even despite that, he couldn't just couldn't come back. Yeah, the paladin curve is just so strong in the late game with challenger and the boom. So incredibly difficult for Drew to deal with. Uh, that's kind of why it makes challenger so strong. It's just because usually when he comes, you're like you're already on board. You're already on board. It's mm -hmm. gonna. Yeah, and I mean, like, it stops the druid's ability to race too, because they have to deal with that noble sacrifice, which is often such a problem for how they can like deal damage to your face. Even mm -hmm. though they have the hero power, they can like kind of break it. It still like just slows them down so much. Yeah, for sure. Like, is there a fair river? It was very close last game. He almost like. Yeah. That's true. But now ties take the final game, and it's it's show who will have to say goodbye to Seed Story Cup four. Yeah. In the first group stage, Froden is the break. How do you say Froden is the champion the of the group, uh, of dreams. Yeah, Froden is the champion of this group, and uh, Tice comes out in number two of the group. No, 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 that was the losers match. Oh, that was the losers oh. match. All right, Tice we got one play more against two, play. Yes, Super yes. JJ, right? Super yes, JJ, exactly. Yeah. So Tice will need to, to win one more to advance. Okay. But Show is look, uh, has O2 oh. right now. So hopefully, we'll I didn't jinx him. <laughs> <laughs> Tice, sit down. How are we doing, man? How are we doing? Oh, you guys look cool. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, man. Why well, are you cool sunglasses, cat. man? Yeah. Don't have them with me, but... <laughs> well so, played. So, um, what do you think about the match? Like, um, what... what Exactly what, what I want to ask is the first game, because that was, like, the most complicated one, and you felt... Uh, we felt like you were beating yourself a lot because of the turn when you didn't proc the second ice block, right? When you didn't play this, the double fireball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what I could have differently. I felt like that I could have done something differently um, by maybe drawing a bit less or maybe, maybe going more aggressive. I don't know if it would really help because we would react other also different ways. But uh, yeah, it was really close. I really have to look that back if they <laughs> could do there something differently. But at the end, I drew one card too much where the, where, and I was one... I went, I went earlier in fatigue, and that costed yeah. me kind of the game. The one arc and intellect that you had to play yeah. to get Alexstrasza right in your hand. Yeah, but it was important. Otherwise, he won't go into Nihilus and will maybe totally wreck me. So I felt like I need to draw. But yeah, it, it's really questionable. Yeah. Well, I guess the rest of the games were kind of self-explanatory apart from that one, right? Do you have any questions for Thais? Why don't you play a second? If you draw a second Savage Combatant, the last weird game, you would have won. You know? Yeah, it was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> like uh, it's, I played the deck a bit, and uh, it's not even uh, it's not my playstyle. I even yeah, <laughs> I had a hard time playing with this deck. Yeah, because like, uh, you were going fast, yeah, and then you couldn't stop yourself from trading the emperor. Yeah. Like, oh, this emperor! You is, wanted like, to trade so <laughs> much. Yeah. Yeah. You could see it. You were so torn. You're like, the, the I'm a control player. I need to trade. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> the the emperor. It's so tempting to kill it. You know, yeah, hero yeah. power kill the emperor. It's like oh, yeah. the, so the much value. overstep for me is super difficult. I I just came out of BlizzCon and I did. I didn't have much time to prepare. I wanted to bring other decks, and I actually still thought about Conquest. And I think that I don't really have a super good lineup, but okay. um, I'm gonna make the best out of it. And uh, it's our still good decks, and uh, we'll see. Well, yeah. will you have one man. more chance? 
Sorry? You have one more chance. Yes. Okay. So I guess we'll be going to a short break before the next match will be Ties versus Super JJ for this. Well, that's the another elimination match. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.